Hey, Stargazers, welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick, and I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In this episode, we'll be talking all about the springtime sky, the stars, the planets, the constellations that you can see as you head outside and look up over the course of the next several months. And we've even got a total lunar eclipse to talk about, although it's technically before spring actually begins. Over the course of this winter, we've had quite a run of beautiful planetary views in the evening sky, but the planetary parade is coming to an end. If we look west after sunset here in late February, Saturn has already faded into the glare of the sun, and Venus is definitely lower every night. Before it disappears completely, though, it's joined by Mercury, the ever-elusive planet, for a quick week or so of easy visibility during the beginning of March. Mercury will be much dimmer than brilliant Venus. Look for it below and to the left of the much brighter planet. Venus will eventually disappear from the evening sky as winter officially ends, and will be visible in the morning sky for the rest of 2025. That leaves us with two other naked eye planets in the evening sky, Jupiter and Mars. They're amongst the true winter constellations, at least to begin the spring. And if you want to know more about what stars are visible there, you can check out the previous episode of Skywatch Wednesday. We find Jupiter still in the horns of Taurus the Bull, it is getting dimmer and farther away throughout the spring, but still very much a naked eye view. A backyard telescope should show you some beautiful cloud band details in the atmosphere, and possibly the Great Red Spot, as well as the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. Mars is on the move during the spring and helps bridge the gap between the winter and spring constellations. It begins the season in the constellation of the Gemini Twins, with the two bright stars Pollux and Castor. Over the course of a month and a half, though, it makes its way into the next zodiac constellation over, Cancer the Crab. Now, Cancer is notoriously dim, without much of a shape to discern. However, there is a beautiful cluster of stars there called the Beehive Cluster. This is a great view through binoculars. On the nights of May 4th and 5th, Mars will appear to be on the outskirts of this cluster of stars, which lies almost 600 light years away from Earth. Just before that, on the night of May 3rd, you can catch a glimpse of the beautiful nearly half-lit moon appearing quite close to Mars and the Beehive Cluster. Mars continues its trek through the constellations after Cancer, moving toward the waiting paws of Leo the Lion. Leo is the true heart of the spring constellations and is most easily recognized by the bright star Regulus, marking the lion's heart, and the backwards question mark, or sickle, marking the head and mane of Leo. Mars will appear to get quite close to the star Regulus on the night of June 16th, right at the end of astronomical spring. You'll see those two less than a degree apart in the sky, which should be quite an eye-catching sight. Now, if you're having trouble finding Leo in the sky, a good place to start is actually with the Big Dipper, the well-known pattern of seven stars that's visible even from light-polluted skies. To begin the spring, it'll be about halfway up in the north-northeast in the early evening, and then by late May, it'll be almost overhead in the northern sky as the sky gets dark. If you imagine filling the bowl of the dipper up with water, and then poking a hole in the bottom, the water will drip out onto the back of Leo the Lion. When Leo has chased the winter stars from the skies, it's a great time to go back to the Big Dipper and look for two other spring constellations. You can use the arc of the Big Dipper's handle and just extend that line, first to Arcturus, and then on to Spica. There's a little saying that says arc to Arcturus and speed to Spica. Arcturus is the brightest star in the constellation of Bootes the Herdsman, and Spica is the brightest star in the constellation Virgo the Maiden. Neither of these constellations are particularly bright or recognizable, but Arcturus and Spica serve as good markers in the sky. Spica also is often visited or even occulted by the moon as it lies very close to the ecliptic, or the plane of the solar system. You can see close passes of the moon by Spica on the nights of April 12th and May 9th. Speaking of the moon, it puts on a great display before spring officially kicks off with a total lunar eclipse visible on the night of March 13th into the morning of the 14th. Lunar eclipses are nice because they're visible from such a wide portion of the globe. and In this case, all of North and South America will be able to see the eclipse in its entirety. In Chicago, the partial phase will begin just after midnight on March 14th, but keep in mind that this is the night of Thursday, March 13th. The moon will move deeper and deeper into Earth's shadow for the next 90 minutes, 
and then from 1.26 a.m. until 2.32 a.m. Central Time, the Moon will be fully eclipsed. But the Moon won't disappear. As light from the Sun shines through the Earth's atmosphere, you'll see the combined light of all the sunrises and sunsets happening on Earth shining on the Moon. The color and brightness of a totally eclipsed Moon varies from one eclipse to the next, but generally there is an orange, red, or copper color to the Moon when it's fully eclipsed. After the total phase ends, the partial phase lasts until about 4 a.m. Central. Now these times can be adjusted simply for different time zones, as these events happen simultaneously across the night side of planet Earth. Now you might have noticed all those times are in the very early morning hours. Certainly not ideal if maybe you have work or school the next day. Tell you what though, lunar eclipses are nice because you don't need any optical aid to see them, and in some cases you don't even have to go outside if you have a window that faces in the right direction. So if you're worried about losing sleep, I would encourage you though to set an alarm for that middle of the uh, total phase, find a window that faces the right direction, wake up for a bit, glance out the window and see it. It should be a beautiful deep red color, and then you can head back to bed. Lunar eclipses are definitely a sight to behold, so don't miss this one. They certainly don't happen every day. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Clear skies. We'll see you next time.